Hello and welcome to the first way too early mock draft of the 2024 fantasy football season. Is this before the actual NFL draft? Yes. Is this before free agency? Yes. Are we truly sick and disturbed individuals? Absolutely. We are doing this in February, just a few weeks after the Super Bowl. My name is Adam Levitan, joined by Evan Silva, Justin Herzig, and Mike Leone to do a three-round 2024 fantasy football mock draft. In other words, this is how we would draft right now for 2024. 36 picks, all pick first, then Silva, then Herzig, then Leone. We'll keep going like that through the full three rounds. Let's get into it. I'll go ahead and take the 1.01 here and go with Mr. Christian McCaffrey. You know, I don't think it's that comfortable to use the number one overall pick on a running back entering his age 28 season, but CMC has not been injured since 2021, and his role and scheme is so outrageously efficient, it's hard to see him failing. Best scheme, I think, in the NFL has allowed him to score 31 touchdowns in 27 games as a San Francisco 49er. So there's a lot of wide receivers that I like a lot at the top of the draft, but 1.01, I think, has to be Christian McCaffrey at this point. Evan, you're up at 1.02. Tyreek Hill, and he's the most dominant wide receiver in the league. He's starting to get a little bit old, and actually we're doing this on Wednesday, February 28th. He turns 20, He turns 30 on March 1st. But he's shown no signs of of slowing down. I mean, uh, in the last two seasons, he's finished top 10 in MVP voting uh, as a a, a non-quarterback, which is really hard to do. I I don't think there's a whole lot more to say. Tyreek Hill, awesome. We're taking him at number two overall. Boom. Next. All right. Tyreek Hill goes number two overall, starting what I suspect might be a little bit of a wide receiver run. Herzig, 1.03. With the third pick, I'm going to go CeeDee Lamb. Number one scoring wide receiver last year. Still youth, still tied to Dak Prescott. Expecting, I mean, hey, no Michael Gallup most likely going forward. You still have an aging Brandon Cooks. Maybe they use some draft talent on a wide receiver. But, I mean, most likely this team is still going to go through CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard also going to be looking at free agency. So the only sure thing we know is that Dak, that Dak and CeeDee Lamb chemistry is going to continue. So third pick off the board, I'm happy to take CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, I I would not have called anyone crazy for taking C.D. Lamb number two overall ahead of Tyreek Hill. The way C.D. Lamb is used in Dallas in that slot role, it's like impossible to guard. Leone, 1.04. Yeah, I'll keep the wide receiver run going and go with Justin Jefferson, who, you know, arguably the most talented wide receiver in the NFL, missed some time with injury last year, some bit of a question mark if Kirk Cousins is going to be back with the Vikings. I think that's much more likely than not. And as long as they have semi-capable quarterback play, Jefferson's going to get it done. I think he's the last in this tier of wide receivers. There's another guy pretty close, but I think um, th- there's a drop off after Jay Jeff. All right. I would agree, actually, as we move to 1.05 here about the teardrop after Jay Jeff, because I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, Jamar Chase is right there with Justin Jefferson. I think there's a drop off there. And I'm actually going to go ahead at 1.05 and take Brees Hall. Now, Brees Hall last year averaged 4.5 yards per carry behind one of the worst offensive lines in the league, caught 76 balls from Zach Wilson, Trevor Simeon, Boyle. He's now another year removed from the ACL tear, and he's going to get Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers is one of the most running back friendly quarterbacks in the NFL consistently, helping them catch a ton of passes and score a ton of touchdowns. And so after the way Brees Hall looked last year, I'm just so excited to get him with Aaron Rodgers. So I thought about Jamar Chase here, but I'm going to go Brees Hall at the 1.05. Evan is up at 1.06. I thought about uh, Jamar Chase here too, but I'm going to go with a super high floor and I think plenty of upside pick here in Amon Ra. St. Brown, the way that he fits with Jared Goff. Jared Goff is like a tall, sturdy pocket passer who just will drill you in the middle of the field. And that's where Amon Ra St. Brown runs his routes. I think we're locking in 100 catches at minimum with a chance at like 120. 
when we take Amon Ross St. Brown. So I'm going with him. Jamar Chase, shocking slide. Shocking slide for Jamar Chase. Still on the board here at 1.07 to Mr. Herzig. I mean, I've just got to take the value with Jamar Chase. I thought I was going to be reaching and grabbing Bijan Robinson over Amon Ra, and then Jamar Chase falls to me. Yes, T. Higgins is likely going to be back, but there will not be a Tyler Boyd. And I still think Joe Burrow is one of the best QBs in the league. Hopefully we get a full year of health out of him. Jamar Chase, like if he can get, I mean, we've seen his upside in some of these games. All you need is a few of those. And especially if we're talking more of a best ball angle, no one has a weekly ceiling like him. Happy, happy taking Jamar Chase at the seventh. All right. A slide for Jamar Chase ends here at 1.07, 1.08 to Mr. Leone. I'll go Bijan Robinson. I think, you know, it's a really good opportunity to buy some of these Atlanta players where we may get a more condensed offense in terms of the touches this season with Arthur Smith gone, a more typical role for Bijan Robinson. I mean, he flashed his ability to be efficient, his ability to operate in the receiving game. So we know the skills are there. It really just comes down to overall usage. And I think it's a really safe pick with the upside to be you know, a top three overall pick next season. Yeah. I mean, coaching change enough alone is enough and they're probably going to get a quarterback upgrade. Also Bijan, very strong. I know people have a bad taste in their mouth, but Bijan, I think very strong there at 1.08. It's funny that we talk about the coaching change as a potential positive for Bijan Robinson when everyone was billing that as a big positive, Arthur Smith as a big positive for Bijan Robinson going in to last season. But I, I don't disagree, but it's just kind of funny to, to think about. For sure. And to be fair, that running game was fantastic in Atlanta, and that's what we expected out of Arthur Smith. We didn't expect him to give so much of the usage to Tyler Algier and Bijan just a disappearance. Well, some of us case. didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 1.09. Back to me. I'm going to go with Puka Nakua. 105 catches, 1,486 yards, six touchdowns, as a rookie, and even if you thought that was fluky, which it's really hard to do that and be fluky, even if you thought that was fluky though, it doesn't really matter because he has Matthew Stafford, the wide receiver kingmaker as his quarterback. I mean, Matthew Stafford has been behind the best wide receiver season ever, Cooper Cup 2021, the second best wide receiver season ever, Megatron 2012. Kenny Galladay was a top 10 fantasy wide receiver twice with Matthew Stafford. Golden Tate had 1,300 yards with Matthew Stafford. Marvin Jones had three nine touchdown seasons with Stafford. And of course, Puka Nakua had what I thought was the greatest rookie wide receiver season ever with Matthew Stafford. So I think the floor ceiling combo here is outrageously high. Cooper Cup, I am worried, is GG. All right, back to Silva here at the 1.10. I, and I wanted Puka Nakua there. I was hoping that you would pass on him, Adam. You didn't, you made the right pick. I think there's a little bit of a teardrop after pick number nine overall. And then we move on. I'm taking Jameer Gibbs. Um, you know, you had the David Montgomery factor. Could there be some offensive regression for the Lions? I actually think that there could be positive regression for Jameer Gibbs, who only averaged six yards per catch as a rookie. He averaged 12 yards per reception in the SEC. Just watch him play. He's more than a six yards per reception player. Only had one receiving touchdown, too. Also got much better in pass protection as the season wore on. He was a player that at, at Alabama did not have to pass protect. When he, you know, when he entered the league, they kind of eased him in because of that um, and used a ton of Dave Montgomery. They, they wound up relying more on, on Jameer Gibbs as the season progressed. I still think it's going to be a high-scoring offense. Jameer Gibbs can actually get better, and he was a stud, you know, every week RB1 as a rookie. Um, I, I do think there's a little bit of a teardrop, but I, I feel very good about this pick. I mean, he doesn't get touchdowns from the one yard line, but he scores so many from the five or the 10 or the 20 that I think it's okay on Jameer Gibbs, even in half PPR, which we're talking about here now. 1.11 to Mr. Herzig. I think this is a pretty interesting one. We know we're going to have two of the next four picks, that 11th and the 14th. And there's a lot of wide receivers in the board that I think are really comparable. So instead, what I'm going to be doing is going for probably one of the riskiest picks in the first and second round. Definitely the riskiest so far, but also has tremendous upside. And that's Kyron Williams. 
We've seen how McVay uses his running backs when he has that workhorse. He's always shown us that he likes Tyron, and this year just kind of confirmed it. Yes, when you have that draft capital, when you don't have that kind of elite efficiency, there's a lot of risk at taking a running back in the first round with those metrics. But when the seasons go right, when things break right for Kyron, he could literally be a top two, top three overall pick based off his usage in the rushing game and the passing game around the goal line. So I'm going Kyron. I mean, they're obsessed with this kid. They, they absolutely love Kyron Williams. Almost 22 touches per game in the games that he played last year for Kyron. All right. Wrapping up the first round here, the 12th overall pick goes to Michael. Yeah, I do think there's one more wide receiver that separates himself, and that's A.J. Brown, who, you know, halfway through this season was having just an utterly absurd fantasy outcome. And then we know the offense kind of crashed the second half of the season. Hertz wasn't fully healthy. I expect the whole team to get back on track and that to be heavily funneled through A.J. Brown. Even with Devontae Smith there, I think it's great to have, you know, two guys like that. And I think A.J. Brown has a little bit more efficiency upside, a little bit more target share upside. So I'm really excited to get him at the end of the first round. A.J. Brown last season had a stretch. Was it a, it was a six game Six-game. stretch where he had 120 plus receiving yards in six straight games. Yeah. Yeah. I want to throw in there as well. You've got Kellen Moore going over to the Eagles as the new offensive coordinator, which I'm bullish on from a passing game standpoint and from playing rather quick. And with Jason Kelsey retiring, maybe Jalen Hurts has a few, you know, a few fewer uh, ends up rushing touchdowns. And maybe that ends up going to AJ Brown. So I like the entire passing game for the Eagles and definitely AJ Brown. Mm, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that yet. Does Kelsey retiring mean fewer tush pushes? That's an interesting one. I'm going to have to think about that. Back to me at 1.13. I- I'm going to get labeled as a Jets truther on this podcast, which I don't know how comfortable I am, but I'm going to go with Garrett Wilson with the first pick of the second round here. I was so impressed with Garrett Wilson last year. I thought with these quarterbacks, with Zach Wilson, who should be bagging groceries at Safeway, soon with Trevor Simeon, with Tim Boyle. I thought Garrett Wilson would just fall flat on his face. Instead, he goes over a thousand yards. He catches 95 balls with one of the worst quarterback rooms I can remember in NFL history. Now he gets Aaron Rodgers. Now he's entering his prime, at least from an age perspective on Garrett Wilson. So yeah, I mean, as long as Aaron Rodgers stays healthy for the whole year, Garrett Wilson's going to catch a hundred plus balls, maybe like 120. So I like getting Garrett Wilson here. I actually had him ranked ahead of A.J. Brown by one spot. Um, so I'm happy to get Garrett Wilson here in the first pick of the second round. Evan, second pick of the second round here, 2.2. Yeah, I feel like I'm in another tough spot here. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of running backs. Um, but I, I'm going to go with the quarterback, actually. I'm going to go with Josh Allen consistently the number one overall fantasy scorer in points per game at the quarterback position. Um, I trust the Bills front office to bring in some superior talent uh, at the uh, at the wide receiver position. I think that letting go of Gabe Davis could actually wind up being a good thing. Um, but, you know, that, that running ability um, and what he brings to the table as a dual threat, I mean – and I, I, you know, at some point, Josh Allen is going to actually win NFL MVP. Like that's going to happen. You know, he's finished twice, I believe, uh, uh, as second overall. I think he can. He has an MVP season in his future on the horizon. I mean, the question always at quarterback is: Is it worth this position in fantasy? at 2.2 overall we will do tons of content and podcasts around that leading up to the season i think from an individual perspective though the way josh allen has broken the game in terms of how many touchdowns he accounts for on a weekly basis that at at the rate at which the bills score and what percent of those he accounts for is just so insane so definitely not out of the realm to be taking quarterback here early second round I, th- I think it's going to be very interesting this year. We're seeing from those, you know, early D gents who are doing best ball drafts that QBs are actually going later than we expected with Jalen Hurts going late third, Lamar Jackson actually going in the fourth. And I think that's a lot of because people are really excited about this young core of QBs that we saw last year. You've even got a couple of rookies with a running upside here. So this could be the return of the late round QB, but Josh Allen just continues to separate himself. So I don't hate it. For sure. Um, okay. 15th overall to Mr. Herzig. 
tonight. There are some attractive, some luring running backs on the board, but I think there's still one wide receiver that really separates from the rest, and that's Nico Collins. From his metrics, they compete with just about any of the other elite wide receivers here. Plus, you're tied to C.J. Stroud. I continue, you know, expect that offense to continue to improve, continue to grow, and uh, as long as we can keep healthy there from both a Stroud and a Nico standpoint, I think this is a smash pick, and it's probably one of the most more underrated one that people weren't expecting coming into this year. Mm, see, I like I, it. I, I, I'm, I mean, Dell was kind of out producing them yeah. when they were both there together. I, I'm. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't, don't, don't take, don't take right my now. future pick. I, yeah, I, 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 I think. So my concern is that a lot of Nico Collins' true breakout last year was after Tank was already out with the broken leg, but Nico's still clearly very, very good. And and uh, yeah, I didn't want Leone to talk about Tank because I was hoping to get to get Tank here. But anyways, Leone, go ahead with pick sixteen overall. I'm going to go with another elite running back prospect in Jonathan Taylor. A little bit of a down year last year, of course, missing the beginning of the season and some time in the middle of the season. But overall, I was really encouraged by what this Colts offense looked like under Shane Steichen, especially like early in the year with Anthony Richardson. They were throwing a little bit more than I expected with him. I think it's going to open up tons of efficiency for JT on the ground. And he's never been a high volume pass catcher, but he's always been a pretty efficient pass catcher. So I'm pretty excited to get, you know, a lead back like him in round two. I'm going to throw some shade on that. I mean, I'm concerned with Anthony Richardson. I think Anthony Richardson pretty much hurts the entire offense from a fantasy standpoint, except for himself. I think he's stealing goal line touchdowns. He didn't throw to running backs in college. He didn't throw in those first few games that he was healthy. I love Jonathan Taylor, but this is not my year for him if Anthony Richardson stays healthy. I think yeah. I think there's some overthinking to the stealing touchdowns argument there. Um, I think this team's going to have a lot of rushing touchdowns. Well, overall. Herzig is also a known Zach around. Moss uh, efficient Zach Moss truther. Yeah. yeah, and absolutely hates Jonathan Taylor. So there's a lot of bias going into that. Yeah, Zach I just thought he's an elite right. talent. Like the, the talent here is really good for a proven work, like a combination of a proven workhorse back with efficiency upside. Like you just don't find guys like this. And Zach Moss cool. is a free agent. Yeah. Too. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, the only thing I have to say about that is when you I hear you guys talk about Anthony Richardson, I start to get really excited because, my God, this guy was going to break fantasy as a rookie, as like a 10th or 11th round pick last year. And to me, that's like the best argument not to take Josh Allen early second round is because you can get Anthony Richardson and other Russian quarterbacks much, much later. All right. Not that, not that later this year. Be careful. Anthony Richards is now going like in the fifth round. It's crazy. All right, forget it. That's not crazy. That's not, that sounds still too cheap on Anthony Richardson. Anyways, Justin's already done 300 best ball drafts. So, okay. 17th overall. I'm going to go with a guy I was out on last year regretfully, and that's DJ Moore. DJ Moore proved that he can win with any quarterback. And I didn't think Justin Fields took a big, big leap forward at all last year as a thrower. He was only good when he threw a DJ Moore. I mean, the guy is so talented. So no matter what they have at quarterback, whether it's Caleb Williams or another quarterback or uh, that they draft or uh, uh, Justin Fields is back, it doesn't really matter. Like DJ Moore is just going to be elite no matter what. So 17 overall, DJ Moore for me, Evan. 18 overall yeah you know you're drafting in a room with spreadsheet socialists when dj moore falls that far because they, they just they can't wrap their head around it. it's too hard the, the spreadsheet socialists run dj moore basically every year except last year yeah. so i don't know if yeah, that's except the best year of his career yeah you, you, you i mean that's fair that's fair, that's fair but it's not player. like a hatred of dj moore okay let's, let's not get that twisted <laughs> okay uh i'm gonna go with travis Etienne begrudgingly uh man he was you know at one point he was like a league winner like probably halfway through last season and he really he hit a wall he hit some kind of a wall the whole team whole jacksonville jaguars as a team hit a wall but i don't see a whole lot of competition for him you know tank bigsby was just couldn't have been worse as a rookie he was like unplayable basically as a rookie and Travis Etienne is locked into a major role. He scored 11 touchdowns last year. That was one of the concerns that I had with him would be his touchdown numbers, and, and they were there. He executed in short yardage at the goal line, something he did not do the previous season. So, um, yeah, I, I safe pick, I think. 
All right, Travis Etienne, we are back to Mr. Herzig at 19 overall. Such a boomer pick when Devon Achan is on the board. You've got the guy who's the most efficient running back in the league last year. His competition was now what? Where he most I think he turned 32 in April. And we know how strong this Dolphins team is. We know how creative McDaniel is for this offense. All Devon Achan needs is the goal line work. And like he's a what? Top five overall pick next year. Um, easy, easy pick. Give me Devon Achan. Yeah. I'm surprised, Evan, when ETN. I, th I thought about taking HN. Thought about it. Yeah. Next thing we know, Evan's going to move to Del Boca Vista phase four with the rest of the running back boomers and not the explosive youngster like Devon HN. Leone is up next. You have the floor, sir. Yeah, this is a tough spot for me. I think things get a little bit dicey. Kind of was tempted to maybe go quarterback here as a result, but I'm going to go with Brandon Ayuk with this pick. And. He's just been emerged as one of the most efficient wide receivers in the NFL. And I think we've seen with San Francisco last year, they were still run heavy, but a lot of that was due to game script. I think we could even see more pass volume out of them this year. Their pass rate over expectation wasn't like crazy low. It was more just game script related stuff. They were slightly negative, but yeah, the combination, I think Purdy's going to continue to grow and Ayuk here is going to put up a big season. Ayuk. Yeah, I do think he'll be back. You know, there's been some rumors and speculation that he'll be gone. I, I think it's almost certain that Brandon Ayuk will be back one way or another with the 49ers. All right. Back to me here at 21st overall. I'm going to do what I guess would be considered a reach at this point, but I really like this. 21 overall. I'm going to go with Chris Olave. I know it was not good last year on Chris Olave. I thought the way they used him was just inexcusable. He did not have any, hardly any layup targets. He did not have any easy targets. They were using him deep down the field. He needs to be more used like CeeDee Lamb. And I think with Clint Kubiak coming in as the offensive coordinator there, we're going to see that out of Chris Olave. Not that it matters too much, but Michael Thomas is gone from the Saints as well. And so I still think Chris Olave is one of the best wide receivers in the entire NFL. Getting a bit of a scheme change there, I think will help him a ton. So Chris Olave for me at 21 overall. Evan, you have the floor. I'm going with Rasheed Rice. Patrick Mahomes, number one receiver. I think that there is about a 50-50 ch uh, chance that Travis Kelsey retires. Hopefully he does because we've seen enough of him. Uh, and they don't really have any other receivers besides those two guys. So Rasheed Rice entering his second season. Patrick Mahomes, number one receiver. Yeah, give me. Yeah, I mean, they came out after the year and said they purposefully eased in Rasheed Rice. And I was going nuts on Twitter all year about them not playing Rasheed Rice enough. People, Chiefs Twitter, like, picked it up and was going nuts also. Then by the end of the year, and this was all in their plans, so credit to them. By the end of the year, though, he was a full-time player. Final 10 games, 8.9 targets per game for Rasheed Rice. Dude is a baller. All right. Second to last pick of the second round belongs to Justin Herzig. I'm going back to San Francisco. The true alpha wide receiver on that team, Debo Samuel. Still, I mean, what? Two years ago, we saw his absolute elite season put up over 300 half PPR fantasy points. Last year, we still saw those spikes. And I still think like hey, that's the kind of well-rounded player that is going to, they're funneling the ball either on the ground and shorter passes. He still has his athleticism. Uh, it's just a, a safe with a weekly upside for those spike weeks because of that San Francisco offense. All right, Mr. Debo Samuel. Guy's always banged up, you know, but you know what you're getting into with Debo Samuel. I mean, he's going to be always banged up, but he's also going to have some huge games. Final pick of the second round belongs to Michael Leone. Yeah, I don't have a lot of confidence here. A couple of wide receivers that seem like they're on the downswing to pick from between Devonta Adams and Stephon Diggs versus like a rookie like Marvin Harrison. I think it might still be a little bit too early for Marvin Harrison. I'm going to go Devonta Adams, uh, just staying on brand. I've long been a Devonta Adams stand. There's concern here. The Raiders under Pierce really wanted to establish it last year. Adams's efficiency dipped a ton. He was down to six and a half yards per target. That was his worst since his second year when he struggled. Um, 
but ultimately this is a guy that's still earning targets over a 30 percent clip there's just not that many guys in the league that earn a target share over 30 percent consistently there's not that many guys who can be utilized at the goal line as a wide receiver like Devontae adams so i'm going to take one last stab at him but i am somewhat worried about a drop off here so, where did you stand back in the day leone on the uh Devonte adams versus jeff janice debates <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Devonta Adams thir- will be 32 years old in December of this season. All right, you guys let it fall to me. We only didn't even mention him there. I mean, I am not convinced by any stretch that Nico Collins is going to outscore Tank Dell this year. Tank Dell, in his first 11 games of his career, was on a 17-game pace of 72 catches, 1,100 yards, and 11 touchdowns. I mean, he was unguardable. And a lot of those games, most of those games, were with Nico Collins in the lineup also. I mean, I know Tank Dell has a broken leg, and I know that's scary after what happened to Tony Pollard and Cooper Cup last year, but all reports are that Tank Dell is going to be back and ready for the offseason program here. And so, guys, just so exciting. And I want to be betting on C.J. Stroud specifically. So first pick of the third round, Tank Dell. For me, I'm not going to take one of these dusty veterans like Devontae Adams or Steph Diggs over an explosive youngster like Tank Dell. I couldn't I couldn't live with myself. I'd rather lose than 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 do that. All right. Second pick of the third round belongs to Mr. Silva. Go ahead, Evan. Um <clears throat> so I already took a quarterback, but we're not like we're not doing roster management here. No, nope, best player available. Right. Jalen Hurts. And I I'm not buying anything about them not doing the, t- the tush push as much because of Kelsey. Kelsey's like a little small little guy. And uh, Jason Kelsey, who retired, obviously, they're, they're going to plug in Landon Dickerson at center. And Landon Diggers- Dickerson is a big boy. And I think that's actually a good thing. Their tush push game is going to improve in 2024. Jalen Hurts, gimme, gimme, gimme. All right. 26th overall, Jalen Hurts to Evan Tush push stays intact. Herzig, 27 overall. If we were recording this yesterday or maybe two days ago, I think I probably would have pulled the trigger on Saquon Barkley here, thinking that he'd stay a giant. But sounds like they're not going to franchise tag him, which seems to be the theme for most of these older running backs. So now I'm a little concerned with what his landing spot is and how much they use him. So let's go with the rookie. Let's go with Marvin Harrison Jr., Yes, it's risky to take a rookie this early, but most one of the things that is positive this year with rookies is it's most likely he's going to go to Arizona in that pick four, and you get Kyler, you get a competent offense. A lot of times with these rookie wide receivers, especially the early ones, they're going to go to a bad team. We're not sure how it's going to work out for him, but I think his talent plus likely positive landing spot, it could also be the Chargers, is just going to be too good to pass up. We're actually below current market. He's been going in like the middle of the second for a lot of early drafts. Um, so taking him the third of the third sounds good to me. I mean, prospect bros are convinced this guy can't fail, that he's for sure Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, you know? And and I think there's like, thinking about it more prob- probabilistically, he's probably Jamar Chase, what, like 50% of the time or something like that, 60% of the time. Uh, so yeah. Still get some fantasy game has changed a bit, though. I mean, Jamar Chase was as highly touted of a prospect as Marvin Harrison, and we were taking him in round five, round six. So, yeah, um, it's definitely changed over the last few years. That's because he couldn't catch the balls in practice. Don't you remember? (laughs) Yes. All right. Still some big names on the board as we move more towards the middle of round two here. I'm sorry, the middle of round three. Uh, I believe who's on the board here, Mr. Leone. I'm on the board. board. You guys like really, really sniped me this last round between Dow Harrison and Hertz. I thought Hertz was a great pick and was hoping he would make it back to me. Um, I think I'm going to go QB train. It's like QB train versus Stefan Diggs, and I've already taken one aging wide receiver. Can't bring myself to do a second one, so I'm going to go Lamar Jackson. And I thought the offense really started to click the second half of the season. So I'm really excited for like a full year two under Todd Monk and what Lamar can do, hopefully with a healthy Mark Andrews for most of the year. Not that, you know, Isaiah likely is a chump by any means. He was really strong too, but 
I'm just excited for the second year of this offense. And you know, the only detriment to Lamar is we see a lot of these short touchdowns go to Gus Edwards. And that's where the advantage that Josh Allen, I think Jalen Hurts has over him, but we still have some very high end rushing upside for Lamar. God, look what Leonie's left me with. Oh my gosh. I'll just say that the highest guy on my board is Steph Diggs. And I, I just want to throw up because there has been bad signs with Steph Diggs down the stretch each of the last two years. He'll be 31 in November this year. It seems like he's always on tilt. Like he's always pissed off, you know? I, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on with That's him. Manu- we, I, we want happy as, as All right, as a homer, I got to say a lot of that stuff's like manufactured. Like it's not. He's like acting. That. He's a he's a crisis actor. No, he, no, he... no, no. Like the narrative's <laughs> manufactured. Like, oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I mean, then what explains his extreme drop offs in the second half of seasons? I don't know. That's, why, that's why I didn't take him. I'm worried about it. I don't Anyways, think we want our tilt. players happy. So, are you going to pick a happy guy or a, or a man? I I don't have anyone else really in this tier. So I'm going to go with Steph Diggs regretfully bite the bullet here middle of the third round you know if he gets his head on straight and by the way beginning of last year he was incredible he had four he had five 100 yard games in his first six games of the season I mean he was balling hard then just hits a wall somewhere along the line also Buffalo went to a very run heavy approach Mm -hmm. in the second half of the year which certainly didn't help but yeah still just step digs gets open at such a high rate I'm, I can live with this in the middle of the third round. So Steph Diggs for me there, I believe that was 29 overall. Silva is next. Yeah, they kind of took the air out of the ball a little bit. All their pass catchers got healthy. And defenses just play, paid a lot of attention to Stephon Diggs. Uh, and, you know, after that monster first half of the season, I think that that's the real explanation um, for his, his drop off. But anyways, I thought about a tight end here. I'm going to go with Malik Neighbors. I think has a chance to be the first non-quarterback drafted. I actually uh, bet him to be the first non-quarterback drafted at nine to one the other day. Apparently, he was available at thirteen to one on, on, on other books, and Adam, you know, got it at two hundred to one or something like that, which is great. But I still liked it at, at nine to one. Um, I think that he's a player that the NFL likes more than the public at this point, and eventually the public is going to catch up and. I, I think that he could go number five overall to the Chargers. I would love that landing spot for him. All right. Neighbors. I like that to Evan. And yeah, there's definitely rumors out there that neighbors could go ahead of Marvin Harrison, in the real draft. I don't think it's likely, but it's definitely possible. And the gap between those two and ADP right now in fantasy is just way too wide. Let's go to Mr. Herzig for his mid third round pick. Uh, this pick is going to be around positional scarcity because the last running back, there's a major tier drop off after I'd say the Barkley and ETN. Cause after that, you're looking at, I don't know, probably a couple rounds before you hit guys like Rashad white, Isaiah Pacheco, Kenneth Walker, James cook, like major, major thorns in all of those picks. So I'm going to go with Saquon Barkley. I think most likely he ends up staying with the giants. They give him a new kind of two year contract on a short, I know on a, smaller budget than what um, that franchise ta- franchise tag looks like and he still becomes like you know that workhorse pass catcher core part of the offense you also have outs where maybe he actually goes to the chargers and now you've got him leading that Harbaugh offense and he could actually work his way back as a first round pick uh so i don't love it given kind of the unknowns of where he could end up but there's that major, major drop up after this. So if you're in the third round late and you want to get your first running back or kind of strengthen that second one, I think it's a decent pick. Oh, right. Yeah, I think that's well said. All right. 32 overall to me. I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit of a reach here, but positional scarcity, I think, Did makes it me? okay. I'm going to go with Mr. Sam Laporta. You don't catch 86 balls as a rookie tight end in the NFL and not be able to ball hard. You just, you just skip me and take my pick. Wow. Oh, Unbelievable. No. I'm trying to manage what pick we're on, <laughs> where we are, whose turn it is, who I want to take. 
Do you guys realize how underpaid I am for managing all this stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Let me see the W2. I'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. And now I just gave away my pick. Go ahead, Leona. You can take Laporta. Jesus. I, I, I was legitimately going to take Laporta. Fine. Um, I believe you. I just feel like there's a cluster of wide receivers. I almost like the ones with like the worst ADPs a bit better. And I'll, I'll, I'll go with Laporta, kind of cop out top tight end. But I'm just so you know, thrilled with what he did as a rookie season. We just don't see that very frequently. Kind of like with Puka Nakua at wide receiver, like you can come up with reasons why it worked, but at the end of the day in historical um, frame of reference, like this just doesn't happen for tight end. So I want to buy into that. And then you look at the offense, you know, they play in a dome. They've got their offensive coordinator who everyone thought was going to take head coaching job coming back. And they've been really good at identifying mismatches by the goal line, which is why Laporta got to 10 touchdowns. I'm a little bit less worried about touchdown regression with him than I might be, you know, a different player, just given some of that uh, contextual stuff. So I, I'm I'm pretty excited to take Laporta. And, you know, I was worried he was more of an efficiency play, not a volume play, but he had 120 targets. Like the volume was still there for him, for sure. Um, all that, all that on from a positional standpoint, it feels like this year is going to be one where you kind of want to get an early tight end. There's definitely some strong ones some young ones at the top of the drafts, and it really falls off quickly. Um, so some years it's like, hey, there's a lot of exciting ones. But there's also like only one rookie tight end we're excited about here. So I like grabbing Hawkinson early. Oh. I mean, Laporta early. Sorry, not Hawkinson. Yeah, Laporta. <laughs> the only thing I was going to say about Laporta is I want my players to have heart, man. And he was he like looked like he broke his leg. It like look like he snapped his knee in that uh what was that the playoff game or, or that was week 18 comes back and dominates all three of their playoff games so yeah gotta have a lot of heart and uh in reality he fits so well with Jared Goff you know like throwing the ball short short ish over the middle to Monra and Laporta Leone in the, in your spreadsheets uh you know on Excel or whatever you use um <laughs> What is the input? Like, how much do you weigh the inputs for heart and happiness? <laughs> uh, I like that. You know, team optimism, I, I'm going to have to make some adjustments. We'll call them the, the Evan Sil Silva adjustments. All right. I like that. Oh, God. All right. Now it's finally my turn. You know, I am going to continue to stack wide receivers who I think can have huge games for my team and break the week in this range for me, the best one available. And there's a t bunch of them in here that I like the best one left for me would be Mr. Devonta Smith, the slim reaper himself. AJ Brown seemed disgruntled at times, seemed unhappy with Jalen hurts. I agree with, I believe it was Leone who took AJ Brown as AJ Brown as a slightly better wide receiver. But that's not to say anything bad about Devonta Smith who won the Heisman of course at Alabama and has been an awesome NFL player ever since he stepped on the field. So Devonta Smith, for me here, very safe floor upside pick, I think, here towards the back end of round three. Silva, you are indeed on the clock yet again. This will be your last pick, actually, Silva. That, that was my last pick. This will be Silva's final pick. So I'm going to make it count, and I'm going to go out with a bang, taking a Mackey Award winner, Trey McBride. I don't care. The haters, they're going to hate. Uh, Trey McBride is going to dominate, Okay. Um, Marquise Brown is probably gone <laughs> in free bars. agency <laughs> and, uh, Trey McBride is a, Trey McBride is a stud. I mean, we saw that last year, you know, he's been doing it since college. They, I know that internally they think that, Hey, this is our Travis Kelsey, uh, and they're going to build their passing offense around him. He's going to destroy in 2024. Love Trey McBride, MF and Mackey award winner, of course. Herzig's final pick of this very prestigious third round draft. I mean, he's not a Mackey Award winner, but he is an absolute beast of a human being. Let's go DK Metcalf. And I know in your recent podcast where you talked about cut candidates, there's a chance that Tyler Lockett doesn't come back. You have the JSN, but like DK Metcalf has just been sneaking. Noah Fant is a free agent. <laughs> there you go. That's... Noah Fant too. And uh, you know, I've targets considered like, guys like Mike Evans, who's a little older. You considered like the Michael Pittman, but you have the Anthony Richardson aspect. So I think, hey, the Geno to DK connection, and if DK can maybe take that next step, we know he's just an amazing athlete. Maybe he can actually become an amazing uh, fantasy football player. Yes, DK Metcalf. He's got to get his head on straight, man. It seems like if you're a defensive back, you can get into this guy's head. I mean, he's out there out of control, but man, when his head on is straight, absolute beast, of course. Final pick of this three-round mock belongs 
to Michael Leone. Yeah, this is tough. This is where like that that group of like Metcalf, Pittman, Evans, like I almost like these guys like Waddle, Devontae Smith, London a little bit better at worse ADPs and was tempted to take Drake London, who I think could be an elite target share earner in like a modern day offense. I'm going to go Waddle. Um, maybe this is just me chasing. You know, I was in on Waddle at the, uh, what, the, the middle of the second round, two, three turn a lot last year, and it didn't work out. But I think the rookie season he had still holds a lot of weight for me. Like guys don't just do what he did. And I think we're just going to see a lot more explosive plays from him this season. I'm not quite sure why it didn't happen a ton last year. Obviously, Tyreek Hill was absurd, but I still think there's room for two guys in this offense and, um, you know, not expecting Waddle to compete on volume. But again, I think more big plays are coming this year. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I believe in Jalen Waddle's talent for sure was definitely an underwhelming year for Jalen Waddle. I think he was banged up for a lot of the year as well. Definitely playing through it. Other guys that I had uh, that just missed who weren't drafted. Michael Pittman, I know who. Herzig mentioned Mark Andrews, who's not that far removed from truly elite dominant tight end stuff. Mike Evans still had a career year at age 30. Roma Dunze, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is going to go in the top 10 of the draft most likely. Drake London, who Leone mentioned. T. Higgins back with a healthy Joe Burrow. And Keenan Allen, if he returns to the Chargers and Mike Williams is gone, is really likely to catch a ton of balls. So those are some guys I had on the bubble there who were not drafted. This was a ton of fun. And by fun, I mean absolutely pathetic because <laughs> it is February and we just did a three round mock. Our rankings are going to change a ton between now and when it's real prime drafting season. But if you are one of these sick pups drafting now, our rankings for 2024 are indeed up on the site as we speak. Four, Evan, four, Mr. Leone, for Justin Herzig. I am Adam. Good luck, everybody. And before you leave, don't forget, we will be having free content here on YouTube all off season long. It will be content that doesn't even hit our audio feed. So be sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Again, it is completely free for fantasy football content all off season long.